What I I think I'm live. What's up, Grayson Report? You guys can see me press one. I feel so short. <laughs> What's up, Diane, Tammy, Matthew, Brandon, Bernadette? What's up, guys? Brandon goes with the lights out. Is it less dangerous like Nirvana? <laughs> How is everyone? D nice. What's up? How is everyone doing? Yes, you guys can hear me and see me. <laughs> What's up, Chris? How is everyone Saturday evening? I went on a little early. I'm in a different studio. <laughs> Unfortunately, we have to do it this way for today. No. <laughs> oh my gosh, and I look so I like the lighting in my studio better. This one brings out all my imperfections. <laughs> Heather whatever, what's up? Yes, I see you. So did anyone do no, D, nice. I thought of bringing Skeleducky, but I, th I thought I was going to forget it, so I decided not to. <laughs> Elaine, what is up? Because I seriously was going to put it in the background. <laughs> but then I was like, no, I know, knowing me, I'm going to forget it. So, guys, did anyone do anything interesting today, Saturday, before I get into my topics? Heather, whatever goes, it's good. You are in a blue light. All right. This is just weird for me. <laughs> Thank you, Diane. Brandon sees the Michael Myers in the back. All right. I guess the lighting's good. <laughs> Still out of place in this studio, but that's okay. <laughs> All right, guys, we have a few articles um, where I search ghost in the news to see what pops up, and then we'll get into the haunted paintings, allegedly. D nice! Thank you for being part of the Wolf Pack for seven months. I can't believe it's been seven months already. Holy crap. Wishing you many more streams of success. Hearts for D nice! Thank you, D nice! Chris Barber went shopping for art supplies. That's cool. Brandon went, was bird watching and eat nachos. That sounds pretty cool, too. Uh, Heather Whatever is trying to work on. My taxes, but my dog has bad memories these days and needs extra attention. Nothing wrong with that. Logical Spock, what is up? I worked this morning. Work went smooth. It was actually a smooth work day, nothing no craziness today no craziness no just us employees griping as we always do when we walk in the door uh birdie debt watched the fallen house of usher great series i've been wanting to see that just haven't had a chance guys i do have merch if you guys did not know you could take a gander. D nice dropped the link. Heather, whatever's like, good. Glad it was a smooth day. It was so good. It was super, um, super smooth. Got stuff done. Wasn't a mess. Brandon Torres goes, isn't a sure <laughs> Yes, he is. Oh my god, I feel like I'm a vampire in this lighting. <laughs> to go back to my lighting. <laughs> oh 
They're like, guys, I forgot to tell you, I'm part vampire. <laughs> I'm part vampire, part werewolf. All right, guys, we're going to get into the first article. Let me see if I can pop it up. It's where I Google ghost in the news and see what pops up. And I thought this article was kind of cool. Let me make sure I'm on it. Um, This one is by the, D, the Des Moines Register. Um, it says ghost tour company underway to buy infamous Vasilla Axe murder house. A ghost tour company is under contract to buy a house in Vasilla where a family of six and their two visitors were bludgeoned to death in their sleep in the 1910s. U.S. Ghost Adventures, a tourism company that is known for their ghost tours, is underway to buy a small southwest Iowa home that has been dubbed as the Vasilla Axe Murder House. 508 East 2nd Street Company official said Wednesday, this will be the company's third and reportedly haunted location available for tours and overnight stays. The Vasilla Axe murders, one of the most heinous crimes in the state's history, took place overnight on June 9th, 1912. It remains unsolved despite years of investigation, multiple grand jury hearings, a slander lawsuit, and a murder trial, according to the Iowa Cold Case blog. The bodies of Josiah and Sarah Moore, their four children and two visiting girls were found in the Moore home in Vasilla, a Montgomery County town located about 100 miles southwest of Des Moines. Josiah was a prominent businessman and well-known church worker in town, according to reporting from the former Des Moines Tribune. The children were identified as Herman Moore, 11, Catherine Moore, 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 10, Boyd Moore, 7, and Paul Moore, 5. Lena Stillinger, 12, and Ina Stillinger, 8, who were visiting the family were the daughters of Jace T. Stillinger, a wealthy farmer living south of Basilla. They were in the wrong place at the wrong time, for sure. According to two reporting from the Tribune, the victims were killed with a huge, huge, huge <laughs> war killers. The killer or killers found in the family's backyard while they slept sometime around or after midnight. The family had spent the evening at a program at the local Presbyterian church and returned home around 10 p.m. These, those interested in staying, it's kind of expensive though, in the infamous Vasilla house can book their overnight stay in January starting at 500 according to the U.S. Ghost Adventures website. The overnight stay lasts from 6 p.m. to 9 a.m. Whoa. So I guess this ghost tour company is trying to make bank. <laughs> By T I'm wondering who owned the house um before, because it doesn't say. Out of curiosity. Nikki, what's up? Heather Whatever goes, it's pretty Lisa. Looks like special effects. The whole room is blue. You're smurf. Thank you, Heather Whatever. Diane goes much cooler here today with winds and mini showers. We're supposed to get rain next week, supposedly, allegedly. <laughs> so, guys, what did you think about another? I don't know. It. My thing is, is who owned it before? Was it the it didn't say. I wish it said who owned it before because um, it's basically saying the Ghost Adventures, which I thought it was Ghost Adventures. I'm like, dude. U.S. Ghost Adventures, because they had to put the U.S. in front of it, <laughs> is a tour company that bought this house. I mean, it's a great investment. I'm sure a bunch of people want to stay there. But I guess the earliest booking is in January. <laughs> I hate when that happens, Heather, whatever. But that was a pretty cool article, I think. And it says they own three other 
haunted location, so I'm wondering what the other two locations are. Oh, you know what? You can look them up, right? <laughs> it's like U.S. Ghost Adventures Haunted Experience and Ghost Tours. All right, here's their website. I'm going to see what else they have. <laughs> it doesn't say. It just says overnight stays. Okay, they list the Vasilla Axe Murder House. Oh, they have the Lizzie Borden House as well as the Welty House in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. Cool. Super cool. And they have a bunch of tour locations that are nowhere near California. <laughs> they got, oh, they have Denver Terrors in Denver, Colorado. Then they have Dallas Terrors in Dallas, Texas. Atlanta Ghosts. Duke City Ghosts. I kind of like how those names are. Haunted Pub Crawls. That's pretty cool, too. Oh, my God. They have a Los Angeles Haunted Pub <laughs> Crawl. That's pretty cool. They have some cool locations. So what do you guys think? Burn it down! Thank you for the super chat. Hashtag Lisa full time 2024 hearts for Bernadette, guys. Heather, whatever goes to the Whaley House. That one is in San Diego, if I'm not mistaken. I want to go to there too. Lisa Boo, what's up? I hear people talking. <laughs> I hear ghosts. I really do hear people talking. Oh, it's outside. I was like. Heather Whatever goes, Reno has every kind of pub crawl. Lots of pubs, lots of crawlers. But they seem like a cool. They have two of the well, no, I, I'm not sure. I'm not. Familiar with the Welty House, but they do have the Liz Lizzie Borden House, and, and now they acquired the Vasilla Axe Murder House. Which I think would be pretty cool to go to. Bernie Dick goes, I love how Elvis is looking at you. <laughs> he is. <laughs> I didn't realize that. Oh, how funny. It is for 500 bucks a night from, what did it say, 6 p.m. to 9 a.m.? So for 15 hours, they let you stay. That's not bad, actually. That is not bad at all. All right, guys, the next article I have is a pretty cool one. It's from All That's Interesting. This one is a real human skull was just discovered in the Halloween section of a Florida antique store. This is definitely different. We don't usually get a call from an antique store that there's a human skull out on the floor. And it goes, a caption to this photo, it goes, oh, it even has like cloth on its jaw wrapped around this. Oh, that is that like for the tag or something? <laughs> a real human skull was discovered in an antique shop in Florida by a customer who happened to be an anthropologist. A shopper at a Florida antique store was browsing through the store's Halloween section, but didn't expect the scare of an actual human skull. 
The unnamed customer was shopping at Paradise Vintage Market in Fort Myers when she noticed something odd about one of the items for sale. It just so happened that the customer was an anthropologist. And she pegged the item as being a real human skull. The Lee County Sheriff's Office was then called in to examine the skull and send it off for testing. It was found in a Halloween section, said LCSO Captain Anita Irarte in an interview with Newsweek. What's been described is that the antique shop was having a fossil day, so the female, an anthropologist, was shopping and noticed the skull and then was like, this is definitely not a Halloween decoration. Testing by the medical examiner confirmed the customer's suspicion. The skull has been sent off for further testing to see what else can be determined about it. What's pre pre preliminarily been decided is, is it's like an archaeological bone, Irarte said. The skull is estimated to be about 75 years old. Wow. According to Beth Meyer, managing partner of the store, the skull came from a store unit that was purchased in 2012. We spent several hours just trying to figure out what to do because several of the deputies were like, this is new. We've never had this experience before, Meyer said in an interview with Wink News. The medical examiner took the skull back to the office and they are going to do whatever they need to do to figure out what it is. You know, honestly, I would keep it. <laughs> I'd be like, that's a real skull? Bring it over here. <laughs> There's no noted trauma to the skull. Irarte said, there's nothing that leads them to believe that the skull has been preserved by suspicious means of any sort. The anthropologist who discovered the skull reportedly told Myers that she believed the skull was Native American, which means the skeletal remains would be restricted to own in most U.S. states. The anthropologist came into the store and gave a very inform informative and educational explanation as to why she thought it was Native American. Myra said the medical examiner came in, bagged and tagged the skull and took it to the lab for testing. If it is Native American, it will be returned to one of the local tribes and we will have a ceremony. This is not the first time a human skull has been found at a resale shop. Earlier this year, a real human skull was found in a Goodwill donation box in Arizona. The skull had its front teeth still attached and had a false eye in one of the eye sockets. It was discovered in the donation box by Goodwill staff, and the donor is unknown. Ooh. But police in Goodyear, a suburb of Phoenix, believed the skull to be historic and not related to any crime. The skull had no forensic significance, meaning there appears to be no associated crime, said Lisa Berry, a spokesperson for the Goodyear Police Department, in an interview with USA Today. Guys, so what do you think? What did you think about this article? Like, would you... I mean, obviously, I guess they have to take it because if, if it is Native American related, um, it should go back to where it belongs. But, oh my God, I would be so not wanting them to take it. But that's me. I don't know about this one, though. The one that they found in Arizona? No. Because that this one looks like it still has, like... It, yeah. <laughs> what did you what do you guys think? <laughs> Bernadette goes girl trip. Lisa Boo goes wonder who it is. I don't know. They're saying there's no uh trauma or anything. This one I have no clue. But the, the one that was found in the antique shop, they said there was no trauma or anything to it. Bernadette goes, dang, it's like, look what I got at a Goodwill. I know, I probably would, I don't know if I would keep this one. I, I don't know if I would keep, because this one seems like it's too, it's too close, because it's not cleaned up. Like, at least the one, um, the one up here, this one looks kind of decently cleaned. So, <laughs> this one I probably wouldn't mind, but this one I think I would feel like there's, there, I would bring home something with it. What do you guys think? <laughs> Heather, whatever goes, the second you said it, I got goosebumps. D Nice goes, imagine a skull to a crime being sold at Goodwill and told otherwise. I know. Well, that would be crazy. Heather, whatever goes, freaky. Diane goes, I think it's creepy. Who and why did they have it? I know exactly. Like, 
Matthew goes, those could have been owned by things like odd fellas and such that use human bones for events and such. True. Lisa Boo goes, can they not take DNA and find out? Um, they probably, that's probably what they're doing. Well, I mean, I don't know what they did with the one in Goodyear, but the one that they found in um Florida, Fort Myers, they they were saying they took it in for testing. But they did confirm, so far they confirmed that it is human. Dean Nice goes, why are those teeth wider than the rest of the skull? And make I Good question. Did someone brush the teeth before returning it? Or maybe they were using it as a, uh, they got it somewhere and they don't know the history of it and they were going to use it as like a prop or something. And maybe, maybe they had, um, they had, uh, what'd you call it? They had, maybe they had an experience with it and that's why they dumped it in a donation bin. Matthew goes, I am sure they want it to be Native American so they could keep it for themselves. P true. True, because they're saying like it's illegal to have a Native American skull. I have no idea why. But it is illegal. In some states, it said. It had stated in the article. But if it is, with all due, I, I, I would rather have it go to where it belongs. Bernard Dickles, I would call the skull Sammy Davis Jr. because of the glass eye. <laughs> Brandon goes, I wouldn't want my skull found in a shop. Heather, whatever goes, maybe it was in the sun first. Yeah, but this one still looks like it has, um, like, I don't know. It still looks like maybe it's got the decomposed matter of the skin still on it. To me, it does. I don't know. I think of those things. D the eye is throwing D nice to see the eye is throwing me off. Elaine goes, BD Cooper, is that you? <laughs> that is just crazy looking. I mean it would be cool to have. As long as there's nothing there wasn't no traumatic death to the skull itself or anything. But Matthew goes, teeth would still be white because the rest of the skull was under flesh and fluids like blood. It is why the, the skull color is not white like the teeth. True. I didn't think of that. And then it goes, Heather Runner goes, Lisa, yes, it does. Yeah, it does. D-Nice goes, the mummy, he's still juicy. <laughs> yeah. That, I, that one looks like it's in the mummy. <laughs> From the mummy. It could have, like I said, it could have been like because of the fake eye in the socket. It could have been like a project. And maybe something happened. To where... They, you know, maybe maybe they were having a spiritual encounter with it or some bad omen. And they, that's why they decided to um, get rid of it. But at a goodwill so somebody else could have the bad omens? I don't know. <laughs> or, or maybe maybe it was a bachelor that owned it. And, and the, he was moving in with his girlfriend. And the girlfriend says, no, get rid of that skull. I don't want it. <laughs> Sorry. Because <laughs> she's like, oh, hell no, I'm not going to sleep with that thing in the house. Which I don't blame her. <laughs> I'll be the totally opposite. I'll be like, I'll take it home. <laughs> It'll be in my background in my studio. Until something happens, of course. If something happens, then I'll be like, no, I don't want it anymore. I'll be sieging it. <laughs> yeah, Heather, whatever goes dropped in the Goodwill shoot and ran. Exactly. That's probably what happened. Something happened for the person to drop it. There, there could be a millions of stories. Or 
the person that owned it because you know a lot of people donate um when i hate to think morbid like this but um when you uh when they have a member that passes away they donate their things so maybe this was something that they were um that they were donating too i mean it could be a number of things they found this and they were like nope nope and more nope But that was a pretty cool article. Heather, whatever goes, my dog removes the eyes from toys so it wouldn't be safe at my house. <laughs> Elaine's like, Lisa's like, don't worry, I got this. Exactly. Maria, what is up? Wendy, what's up? How's it going? We were just talking about for the people that came in this uh, uh, antique shop. Well, it wasn't this one. This one was the one in um, Arizona, but an antique shop in Fort Myers, Florida. I want to say Fort Myers, Texas. Don't ask me why. Fort Myers, Florida, right? Fam um, a happened to be anthropologist was looking through. Halloween decorations and found a real skull mixed into the bunch. And then I guess as the at an added bonus, um, an air a Goodwill in Goodyear, Arizona had this in one of their donation bins. So that is crazy. Delay Lux, what is up? Teresa goes, just popped in like, comment, and share. Tonight is 17 years since I first got together with my husband. We officially began dating. So, hey, congratulations, Teresa. Enjoy your anniversary. Thank you for popping in. Hearts for Teresa, guys. And wish her congrats for her 17 years since she first got together with her husband officially nerd report in the house nerd report saying screw youtube patrick saying three miles from me the skull looks ancient lewis from nerd report said they blocked your channel what Well, they do because I don't enter. Sometimes people don't see my channel. Bernadette! Thank you for gifting five memberships. Hearts for Bernadette, guys. And Heather, whatever. Peg, Tyranna, Marciano, or Marciana, sorry. And Project Metal Music were all gifted memberships via Bernadette, guys. Hearts for Bernadette and welcome all the new members. Justin goes, Lewis is flipping out about YouTube and told everyone to come over here. That's crazy. Patrick goes, but I'm watching. Thank you, Patrick. And shout out to Peg, Tyranna, Marciana, and Project Metal Music. Justin, they weren't notifying people again. They tend to do that with my channel. I tend to go on. I literally go on, except today I went on a little early. I usually go on Saturdays at 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time and then Mondays at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time and people still don't get notified. And I'm on like pretty much the same time every week. Which is kind of crazy. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Deny! 
guys, thank you. <laughs> My voice is cracking. Thank you for your PayPal for dinner tonight. Thank you, D-Nice Hearts, for D-Nice, guys. It was delayed. <laughs> All right, guys, we'll go into my next topic. I didn't pick enough topic because I thought I had enough topics. I may have to, like, kind of go on the fly here. Um, but my next article is from Sky History, and it's eight mysterious ghost towns from around the world. From the haunting remains of a French village that fell foul of the vengeful Nazi ends. To an entire city abandoned after the worst nuclear accident in history, we take a look at some of the most mysterious and enigmatic ghost villages, towns, and cities in the world. Number one, Imber. Imber is a village in Wiltshire that was recorded in the Doomsday Book in 1068. As the Allies prepared to invade Europe in World War II, the Ministry of Defense needed somewhere where they could train large numbers of American troops. Amber was chosen as the ideal location. It was, it was compulsorily purchased and all 150 residents were evicted. Despite being told that they could return after the war, the MOD decided to keep the village and refused to let the residents return home. Today, much of the original village has been destroyed by shell damage and training exercises. The parish church of St. Giles has been restored and holds an annual service, while the village's pub, the Bell Inn, still stands as a reminder that this was once a thriving rural, rural community. That sucks. Just imagine them telling you, well, we're taking over your town or your village, but you may get it back, and they never got it back. Just imagine, like, you, you, Julissa, what's up? Merlin, what is up? Anthony Phillips, how's it going? Just imagine having your home, and I don't know how long that village was there, but just imagine being there for, for quite some time, and this is your home, and they come in, we're taking, we're taking it. And never to return. That has to be. At least the church was um, restored. And they have kind of um, services every year. So I guess the, that's a positive about it. Number two. Verosha. The city of Famagusta was overrun during Turkey's invasion of Cyprus in 1974. And it has remained under Turkish control ever since. This was bad news for Famagusta's practical practically brand new district of Verosha, an area of high-rise hotels, bars, shops, and restaurants built to take advantage of the boom in cheap package holidays during the 60s and 70s. The Turkish authorities fenced the resort off, and that's how it stayed for nearly 50 years, a bizarre 1970 time capsule that nobody was allowed to visit. In 2020, Verosha was finally opened up to limited numbers of visitors who can now enjoy the experience of wandering around a part of the city that hasn't changed since ABBA, Susie Quartro, and the Osmonds were riding high in the charts. Whoa. Super crazy. Well, what's up? Number three, Kiyako. Kiyako or Kiyako? The Greco Turkish War of 1919 to 1922 ended in a victory for Turkey. The tre Treaty of Lausanne of 1923 officially ended the conflict, and as part of the agreement, Greece and Turkey agreed to a population exchange that saw many Turkish towns and cities emptied of their Greek populations and vice versa. On one such town was Kayako in southeast Turkey. Before the war, the town had a thriving population of 6,500 inhabitants. Following the exchange, it was completely empty, and that is how it has stayed ever since. 
a truly astonishing sight. The ghost town sits on a hillside. It's hundreds of Greek style houses and churches, now roofless ruins. A few houses have been restored, but for the most part, Kiako lies empty except for a few interpreted turps, tur tourist turps, and a handful of roadside vendors, a stark reminder of the price ordinary people pay when their leaders go to war. I know I butchered that name, so I apologize. Number four. Sarai, what's up? Number four, Krakow. Krakow. Italian towns and villages are often so heartbreakingly beautiful that it is hard to imagine anyone abandoning one. That, however, is exactly what happens to the town of Krakow, or Krakow in southern Italy. I feel like it would be more Krakow. Had been plagued by problems such as poor agricultural lands and landslides for many years, which caused people to start leaving as far back as the 1890s. However, what finally did for the place was the attempt to upgrade the town's water and sewage systems in the 60s, followed by more devastating landslides and an earthquake. By 1980, the ancient town was completely abandoned and left to fall into ruin. Since then, Krakow has been a magnet for film producers. Films such as The Passion of Christ and Quantum of Solace have featured scenes filmed in one of Europe's most ignamic and beautiful ghost towns. I wish it would show pictures. It'd be kind of cool. Number five. Orador Sir Glan. On 10th June 1944. A company of Waffen SS soldiers. Marched into the sleepy French village. Of Orador Sir Glan. And committed an atrocity. That still has the power of shock. 80 years later. In retribution for the capture and execution of one of their compatriots, the soldiers rounded up the village's 643 residents. What? They pew-pewed the men and burned the women and children alive in a locked church. Oh my gosh. They then partially raised the village to the ground. The massacre was immediately condemned by the Vichy... The Vichy? The Vichy? Vichy. I'm going to say Vichy government, as well as by several prominent Germans, including Bill Marshal Erwin Rommel. Most of the men who carried out the atrocity never faced justice as they were later killed in action. Today, the remains of Oradour sur Glane, which includes its burned-out buildings, rusting 1940s vehicles, and personal effects of the villagers, including watches that stopped at the time, that stopped at the, time the village fell, are preserved as a memorial to all those who died in the massacre, as well as the many citizens who were killed across France during the Nazi occupation. Wow, that is sad. Elaine's like, what? That is horrifying. That is. I know, Bernie did. It kind of did sound like that. That's why I changed it to Vichy. <laughs> Will Morris goes, they definitely live up to their name for sure. Justin Burris was like, damn. Merlin goes, didn't know that. Will Morris goes, Stone Cold Brandon Torres. I love Stone Cold Steve Austin. <laughs> He's probably one of my favorite wrestlers. Stone Cold Steve Austin. <laughs> When I watch wrestling, I haven't watched wrestling in years. <laughs> and and you have to have a leather vest too, Brandon. <laughs> I know Will Morris, it is. Heather Whatever goes horrible for sure. Nikki is saying smash that like button if you haven't done so. It will be greatly appreciated. Number six 
is Hashima Island. Rising from the sea eight miles from the port town of Nagasaki in Japan lies Hashimi Island. A jumble of abandoned high-rise blocks of unequaled height looks from a distance like a warship which has earned the island the nickname Gunkanjima, which means Battleship Island. The island was home from 1887 to a huge undersea coal mine and, it, and its abandoned building once housed mine workers, including Korean slave laborers, forced to work there during World War II. The island was abandoned in 1974 when the mine was depleted and its crumbling ruins eventually became a tourist attraction and occasionally film, filming locations such as for the 2012 James Bond movie Skyfall. Do you guys, anyone familiar with Skyfall and remember a crumbling ruin in it? I'm not familiar with it. I don't think I've seen that one. Number seven. Number seven, Bodie. At one stage, the California town of Bodie, or yeah, Bodie was a thriving community of 2,000 structures and 8,000 people. Now just a handful of buildings remain and the people are long gone. So what happened? In 1876, a large deposit of gold was discovered near what was then just a tiny settlement. Within months, Bodie had been transformed into a bustling Wild West boom town with a mile-long main street line with a whopping 65 saloons, a red light district, and a Chinatown. Brawls, bar fights, murders, robbers, and shootouts were a regular occurrence. However, the boom didn't last long. The mine began to, began to deplete by 1880, and many miners left to seek their fortunes elsewhere by 1910. Just 698 people remained, and when the last mine closed in 1942, there were just 90 people left. Eight years later, the population was zero. Today, Bodie's 170 remaining buildings are designated National Historic Landmark, and the town is a popular tourist attraction. Number 8. Pripyat When the Chernobyl nuclear reactor went into meltdown in 1986, the nearby city of Pri Pripyat found itself on the receiving end of the biggest dose of radiation since World War II. Founded in the 70s to house workers and scientists for the nearby power plant, the city was evacuated two days after the disaster and has remained abandoned and decaying ever since. Over the years, Pripyat has become an unlikely tourist destination with intrepid travelers heading to the city to see its rows of ghostly residential blocks, its ruined swimming pool and football stadium, and its famous dilapidary, dilapidated Ferris wheel that dominates an abandoned theme park that was scheduled to open five days after the disaster. Wow, I did not know that. Guys, what did you think of this article? It's some super cool... Um, I wish they showed pictures of what um, those places look like. Some super cool. I didn't know about the Chernobyl that, that, that they had a theme park that was supposed to open five days after the incident. That's crazy. Bernie Dick goes, oh man, that documentary about that was crazy. Wendy goes, is it still radioactive? I doubt. I mean, it's seeing that tour because I was thinking the same thing, but it's seeing tour. It's a tourist attraction. So maybe not. Justin goes, I bet that place is insanely haunted. I bet you a, a lot of those places um, are haunted. Especially that, that Fran the, the French village with the massacre. Oh my gosh, that one for sure. I'm pretty sure there's a lot of un uh, restless spirits there. Chameleon UK, what is up? Elaine goes, they made a movie about it called Chernobyl. I saw that, but I never got a chance to watch it. I may have to check it out. Chris Barber goes, some I've heard of, some not. Brandon goes, I want to open a cheap theme park and call it Torres Attra Attractions. <laughs> Sariko Skyline is the one with Javier Bardem 
as the villain. I still know. I don't think I've seen that that Bond film. Justin goes, I've heard about the theme park, but didn't know it was brand new at the time of the accident. I had no clue about that. That's crazy. Bernadette goes, yes, it's still radioactive, but you have to have clearance. It's not as bad now, though. Okay. I figured that much because if it was super bad, they wouldn't let people, like, they wouldn't mention that it's a tourist attraction. Thank you, Wendy. Diane goes, Chernobyl was so scary in the, in the day. Can't imagine even wanting to go there. Too much radiation. I wouldn't want to go there. Maybe at a safe distance I would see it, like, on TV, but... Merlin says, yes, he was the villain in Pirates of the Caribbean. I, I need to check out that, that Bond movie, Skyfall, to see those ruins. Heather Whatever goes, people sneak in. I'm sure people do. Whenever they say you can't go there, they're going to go there. You never can't say don't do that or can't do that. People are going to tend to do that. Unless it really makes you sick, then that's probably what will keep people away. Chameleon goes, I'm at the south gate, so if you want a new motor, use that entrance, okay? <laughs> Wendy goes, do they give you some kind of monitor Geiger thingy? I don't know. I really don't. I got to check out that Chernobyl um, uh, diaries thing to check out. Pretty Dick goes, is that the Bond movie that he came out of the ocean with a tiny speedo on? <laughs> Pretty Dick! Gangstar Dave, what is up? Camellia goes, they give you a canary in a little cage. I feel sorry for the canary. I do. <laughs> I think it's still on, because I remember coming across it. Alright, Sari, I gotta check that I gotta check that one out. Merlin goes, it's not safe animals that live there adapted to survive. I'm pretty sure. Gangstar Dave, thank you for subscribing. I appreciate it. Alright guys, we're going to get into the nine allegedly haunted paintings and the disturbing true stories behind them. And then I'll search. Come on. Alright, this one is also from all that. It, it, all that's interesting. I love this site. It has so many different cool articles. So I tend to pick from it. <laughs> This one's like, from the chilling anguish man to the work of John Wayne Gacy, these supposedly haunted paintings and the circumstances surrounding their creation are enough to send shivers down your spine. Art is a reflection of the soul, but could an artist put too much of their self into a piece? Or worse yet, could something else attach itself to a work of art? Whether you believe in ghosts or not, there are certain pieces of art that simply evoke an eerie, dreadful feeling. Perhaps some might say these paintings are truly haunting. And by the way, get something from Home Depot while you're at it. <laughs> some of these ads are hilarious on these articles. From the mysterious painting. I think I read that. Didn't I read this? 
thought I did. From the mysterious painting, The English Man, to the works of serial killer John Wayne Gacy, the stories behind these allegedly cursed paintings are excellent fodder for a dark and stormy night, and the pieces themselves are quite creepy too. Read on to learn all about these reportedly haunted paintings and the stories behind them. Just don't stare for too long. I'm going to keep staring at it. <laughs> the hands resist him. The haunted painting that moves when you look away. Oh my gosh, this one's a crazy looking painting. From first glance, it's clear there is something deeply disturbing about William Stoneham's 1972 work, The Hands Resist Him. The painting depicts a young boy stood next to an eerily lifelike doll with a downturned mouth. Behind him in the darkness, beyond the glass door, the hands of children reach for him. The art is terrifying enough on its own, but the alleged hauntings that plague its owners make the eerie painting even creepier. According to the lineup, several prominent figures in the art world would, who came into contact with the painting died shortly after it was sold, including the art critic Henry Seldes and actor John Marley who purchased the painting. Marley died in 1984 and the painting seemingly disappeared for nearly two decades. Oh my god, this painting is creepy. Would you, guys, would you own this painting knowing, knowing the history? Of this painting. Chameleon UK goes. Those paintings of the freaky looking kids. That everyone blamed for burning down the house. I've heard. I don't know if it was it this painting. I've heard of that. Chris Barber goes. I was just at Home Depot today. <laughs> Wendy believes that. Uh, that. Paintings can be haunted. Gangster Dave's like, no, never. Wendy goes hard past. Diane's like, no. Heather Whatever's going, no. Elaine's like, nope. D nice, nope. Bernadette goes, I love the smell of Home Depot. There's so many ideas there. Brandon goes, I would. It's a great story. Sadie so goes, creepy. That's still, I like the little hands. It's just creepy. <laughs> and again, don't forget to shop at Home Depot. <laughs> but in 2000, it resurfaced on eBay, of all places. The new owners were looking to sell the paintings as soon as possible because they claimed it was haunted. Allegedly, in the middle of the night, the boy and the doll in the painting would fight, terrifying the couple's four year old daughter. The sellers also claimed that they captured footage on motion sensor sensing cameras of the boy in the painting physically leaving the frame and stepping into the room running away in fear. The owner warned that those who were faint of heart should not bid on the painting. More than 300,000 people viewed the listing and many reported that simply looking at the painting made them feel ill or upset. Stoneham eventually came forward to speak about his inspiration for the painting, revealing that the boy in it was himself, that the hands in the background represented other lives, and that the doll represented his guide between two worlds. Stoneham was adopted, and the painting is meant to serve as a representation of his adoption. He even created a sequel painting, The Hands Invent Him, which depicts the scene of the other side of the door. I actually kind of like that story. Um what the artist had said that kind of makes that that kind of makes the 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 painting even more interesting to me minus the the boy coming out of the picture and running away in fear i don't know about that one i think they're just trying to get um well it's on ebay so and i'm pretty sure it was a bid with a um with a reserve so i'm sure they're trying to get some type of you know money for it the anguished man 
a haunting painting from an unknown artist. Often called one of the world's most haunted paintings, the story behind the English man is like something out of a horror movie. Its current owner, Sean Robinson, detailed how he came to be be in possession of this horrifying painting in an email to Dread Central. The English man painting was given to me by my grandmother, he wrote. The artist of the painting is unknown, but we do know that the artist mixed his own blood into the paint and committed S not long after the painting was finished. I guarantee you that the original pa haunted painting is locked away in a secure location and I have no intentions of selling it. Robinson added that it would be dangerous to sell the painting as it is really active and really strange things happen for people who are in the same room or even in the same house with the painting. Blood-infused paint and S are certainly ex excellent fodder for a haunted backstory, but what exactly are these really strange things Robinson mentioned? While well, Robinson detailed these alleged hauntings on his, well, yeah, where he claimed he could hear crying and moaning noises in his house. He also claimed that he once saw the figure of a man stalking him. It should be noted, however, that in 2016, rights were required to make a film based on the story of the painting. And without anyone else to verify Robinson's claims about the painting's origins and purported cor curse, it's likely that the story is purely fictional. Guys, what do you think of this painting? Do you, do, you, do you believe the story that Robinson is saying? Or do you think he's just making it up? Because there's no evidence, I guess, supporting that. But that painting is scary looking. Just imagine having that on the wall and you wake up in the middle of the night and you see that. I, I would want to put... I would, well, I'd put something over it. <laughs> Wendy goes, I've heard of that before, mixing blood and paintings. Merlin goes, all blood magic. Diane goes, definitely a way to sell it, but still not anything I would want. Julissa hangs out at the garden center, mostly at the Home Depot. I sure wish I knew how to build things. It's, it's, it's our, um, it's our, it's like a subliminal message telling us to go to Home Depot. <laughs> Gangster Dave goes Don't want to get cursed For sure Because it doesn't matter if the store is real or not There's a possibility that it is And you could be affected by it Wendy is like Nope not in my house N Chris Barber goes Not my taste of art Matthew Cobert goes, paintings reminds me of the creature in the X-Files. I actually know what it does. The host um, from that episode, I think it was called the host. It was like a, what was it called? A fluke worm or something like that? I think that episode was called the host. I think. I think it was the season one where they had it. They called it, it does, Matthew. Honey, 2800, what is up? Bernadette says, I'd hang it up. It's pretty cool art. Is it true? I don't know, but cool story. Tyranna! What's up? Elaine goes, I'm not sure, but they can keep the painting. D-Nice goes, that looks like the mummy Arnold Voslo. Matthew goes, some people use pigs or sheep bloods for their paintings. Curse bar, we go, ding, 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 Lisa is a winner. Sold to the girl with the glasses in the back. <laughs> with the beanie. In case there's more than one girl in the back with glasses. <laughs> Matthew goes, the host season two. I got the name right, though, because I have uh, season two. That's right. Because I came in um, when I started watching the X-Files, I came in on season two and it was about um, it was dot com was when I started watching it. Uh, when I became like a super fan of it was with dot com. I remember that's when I started watching it religiously. Julissa goes reminds me of an Edward. Munch painting. 
Chameleon UK goes, the most scary art piece I've seen was a Newcastle at Newcastle College. Thought it was clay wall tiles of ears, but it was something completely different. Female per Whoa. That's crazy. Bernadette goes, makes me think of a hot dog being cooked. Um, <laughs> if a hot dog had, if a hot dog had expression. <laughs> The unknown artist is now going to come forth and goes, you know that painting you were talking about looking like a, a cooking hot dog? Well, I'm the one that painted it. And I'm so-and-so because everyone's saying it's an unknown artist. I am the artist. No, I'm just kidding. Chris Barber goes, the scream. Yeah, it does look like that, too, because they have a, um, they have ghost face in this type of style painting where he's like kind of looks like that, too. Kind of looks like that. It does. And by the way, buy your smokeless fire pit. <laughs> oh, no, I think the ghost followed me. To Lewis's studio. I saw it glitch for a second there. Alright, the next one is Love Letters. The Driscoll, Driscoll Hotel's Haunted Painting. Oh my god, that is a nice painting. How can you call that haunted? That is a beautiful painting. I actually would hang this painting up. I don't know, if the eyes move, that's going to be another story. The Driscoll Hotel in Austin, Texas has a rich history throughout its time and operation. It hosted presidents, rock stars, and all manner of prominent guests. There are also claims that the Driscoll Hotel may have a one permanent guest in the form of a ghostly little girl. But it's not a room she is said to haunt. It's a painting. The painting in question is a modern replication of Charles Trevor Garland's love letters done by Richard King. The painting shows a little girl with a bouquet of flowers in one hand and a love letter in the other. According to Texas Hill, Count, Co Texas Hill Country, the story goes that in 1887, U.S. Senator Temple Leah Houston's four-year-old daughter, Samantha, tragically died at the Driscoll Hotel. The young girl has been chasing, had been chasing after a runaway ball when she tripped and fell down the Driscoll's hotel staircase. She reportedly looks similar to the girl depicted in the Love Letters painting, leading paranormal enthusiasts to believe that her spirit now inhabit inhabits the painting. Guests who visit the Driscoll Hotel have claimed that they witness the girl's expression change when they stare at the painting, or feeling as though the girl's eyes were watching them move. Some have also reported feeling ill when looking at the painting or experiencing the strange sensation of being lifted off their feet. Of course, the girl in the painting is not Samantha Houston, and given that the artwork is a modern recreation of an older piece, it wasn't actually around during Samantha Houston's time. This painting I would definitely have hanging up. It's a beautiful painting. Backstory or an urban legend or not, because this is more of like an urban legend, because they're saying that this painting was not around at the time that Samantha had a tragic accident but they're saying she looked like the girl in the picture so hmm gangstar doll dave says annabelle doll this one's a bit more beautiful than an annabelle doll d nice goes that looks like my doll i used to have gangstar dave also says she looks alive Bernie Dick goes, that little girl looks evil. No, she doesn't. She looks sweet. She does. Delay Lux says, I got to go to the Driscoll Hotel in Austin, Texas. So he also says the painting reminds me of Annabelle. Brandon would have all the scary paintings up in my creative room. Lisa Boo goes, I love that style of painting. Yeah, this painting is beautiful. Like, I agree. Elaine goes, gorgeous painting, so much detail. I 
Helio. Heroes, hopefully I did not butcher your name, but thank you. I'm glad you're here. Gangstar Dave goes sweet but evil. Bernadette goes, no, evil. Looks at, look at that smile she's doing. Julissa goes, she does look very sweet. She looks very sweet. But then I guess if you stare at her long enough, they say she her expression moves. So maybe Bernadette, you have some, you know, there's some thought with her looking evil. <laughs> Chris Barber goes, her hidden left hand is probably covered in blood. See, Chris is going down. <laughs> well, you could see her. You could see her hand. You just can't see the top of it because she's holding the bouquet of flowers or roses. But I like that painting. That painting will definitely, I would hang that painting for sure. All right, the crying boy, the UK's most haunting, haunted painting. I think this is the one I heard of before. In the 50s, artist Giovanni Bragolin created a series of paintings depicting young teary-eyed children. For some reason, mass-produced prints of these paintings proved to be incredibly successful all over the world. More than 50,000 copies of the paintings were sold in the UK alone. One painting in particular Known as a crime boy seemed to be followed by tragedy. In 1985, the Sun published an article called Blazing Curse of the Crime Boy. It detailed the experience of May and Ron Hall, whose home in Rotterdam burned down. Yes, I did hear about this. I was going to say uh, fire. The cause of the fire was a chip pan that overheated and burst into flames, destroying nearly everything on the ground floor except for a print of the crime boy. The Halls claim it was not a chip pan that had started the fire, but the crying boy himself. Normally, such a claim would have been a one-and-done occurrence for the son, who frequently published tabloid news stories. In this case, though, one firefighter said that he had been at the scene of 15 different home fires where everything was destroyed. In each instant, the only thing that remained was a print of the crying boy. The Sun soon published a series of articles reporting on this strange phenomenon. They claimed that a home in Surrey had burned down six months after the owner purchased a copy of The Crying Boy. A pizza restaurant in Norfolk was destroyed by a fire, leaving only a copy of the painting. And that a woman on the Isle of Wit had unsuccessfully attempted to burn her copy of The Crying Boy, after which she was plagued with terrible misfortune. Bregolin, Bregolin, was known to paint children for poor circumstances, so countless theories surfaced that attempted to explain why exactly the crying boy was cursed. Some claimed the boy had died in a fire and now his spirit was trapped within the pa painting, pavement painting. Whether the truth may have been, the sun certainly riled up the public's fear around the painting, and on Halloween of 1985, the newspaper gathered hundreds of copies of the painting and set them on fire. Guys, what do you think of this painting? Do you think do you think this innocent beautiful painting the cry boy caused fires? I heard about this one. It's a cool photo. I mean, it's a beautiful painting too as well. Leonor, what is up? Jennifer Marie, what is up? I'm all cracking. I'm like, Jennifer Marie. <laughs> Elaine goes, he looks so sad. D Nice goes, why would people want to buy pictures of kids crying? Messed up. Maybe more for like the artistic side of it. I kind of think of you that way too, Denise or D Nice. I'm like, yeah. It's kind of sad though, if you think of it. Gangstar Dave says, oh, look sad.
Chris Barber goes so sad. It is. It's a sad, sad photo. It does have cool details to it, like a good kind of history to it. But I guess every, every house or instant that had this particular painting or print, I think it was a print. The only thing that survived was this print. So that's kind of weird. Julissa goes, looks sad, but kids that age cry a lot. It's a beautiful painting. Diane goes, emotional picture, but well painted for sure. Leonora goes, sad childhood paintings can feel creepy, especially with a past to it. It's, it's true. Hello, Kiros. I'm sorry if I'm bit butchering your name. My mother had one of one of these pictures. She set it on fire. The family was scared. Some people saw the deep. Whoa! Wow! Crazy. Wendy Marino goes very sad eyes. Elaine goes. I just want to hug him. Maybe he is trying to tell people something. Maybe. Well, they're saying that. Um. The boy, like, the, the boy in the painting passed away in a fire, so they, that's where they're thinking it came from, but. Chris Barber goes, if the kid had on glasses, he would look like my brother at that age. Whoa, that is crazy. That's trippy. Mark, what is up? Julissa goes, interesting, I zoomed in and I noticed a halo. Anyone else see it? Oh, yeah, there is. But then is this a picture? Because they were saying that they had prints, right? And you know they put said photos like on a coffee table? You know what it kind of looks like? It kind of looks like somebody put their drink on top of it. But it does look like a halo, but at the same time, it looks like someone put their, <laughs> they put their, uh, their iced tea on top of it in it. A very large iced tea glass. <laughs> but it does look like that, Julissa. That's crazy. I didn't think of that. But it could be a copy of a copy. So it could just be maybe it's something that was on the photo that they took. Giggles is just getting notified. What? Pesky YouTube. They like to do that. What's up, Giggles? All right, the stage craft, an allegedly haunted painting based on a photograph. In 1994, commercial photographer James Kidd and an oil painter identified only as Laura P. each displayed their works at a gallery in Tombstone, Arizona. There, Kidd displayed a photograph he had taken at an old stagecoach stop in Tombstone, a double exposure shot that bizarrely featured a figure on the left-hand side seemingly lacking a head. Laura was so fascinated by the photograph that she asked Kid if she could do an That just jumped on me. That was weird. If she could do an oil, oil painting of it. But as she was working on the painting, Laura began to have a strange feeling that she should not have started at all. Suddenly, odd things began to happen around her. I do not believe in ghosts, she wrote for Live About, but I cannot for the life of me explain how or why these strange things have happened. I cannot attribute every one of these events directly to the painting, but they have all taken place since it has been in my house and are totally unexplained. It began innocuously enough. Laura framed the painting and hung it in an office at a business location, but no matter how often the office workers straightened the painting, it would always be crooked the next morning. Laura took the painting back and she and her husband moved into a new home in 1995. 
When it rained, the roof of their garage would leak, and even though the roofers came to look at it three separate times, they could find no explanation as to why it was leaking. That's when Laura husband, Laura's husband realized the sagecraft had been leaning against the wall between the living room and the garage. Once they moved the painting, the leaking stopped. Things started to ramp up, though. Objects began flying off the wall. Even people who simply looked at photographs of the painting began to experience strange things in their homes. When Laura's neighbor borrowed the painting, he swore he saw a white, hazy figure creeping around the corners of his home. I still don't actually believe in ghosts, Laura concluded. Yet, if I had to do it over, I would not have created this painting. Just imagine creating this painting and it caused and it caused havoc that's crazy i don't know about this painting though this is just like a simple painting this looks like a simple painting you would put in your guest room <laughs> Wendy goes, I had a print of a lady in a boat surrounded by flowers. I loved it for years until I had a reading in Boston. Yep, the woman in the boat was me jumping from port to port, i.e. relationships. When I got back to my house in Florida, I threw the print in the trash. Spooky, but real. Oh, that is crazy. Kyle GT, what is up? Wendy goes, I never told this median a thing. Chris Barber goes, it's not even a good picture. That's what I'm saying. It really isn't. It's like a simple painting you would put in your guest bedroom. It's like a very, like a simple, like not much to it. With like a ghostly figure. I'm guessing right there. But that is crazy. Gangstar Dave likes it. Julissa goes, that's so bizarre to me. But yet, she still does not believe in ghosts. I think something, I mean, I, I, th I would think that would make her a tinge bit of a believer. Just a tiny bit. Tiny bit. Brandon goes, but the context clues. I know. I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> Delay Lux goes, I don't like it. I would put it over the toilet. I was thinking that too, Delay Lux, but I didn't want to say toilet. I was going to say guest toilet, guest bathroom. <laughs> but. I didn't want to say that, but I was thinking that too. I don't know. That just that, that reminds me of guest bathroom, guest bedroom type painting. <laughs> All right. The Rain Woman, the painting that haunts your dreams. Don't forget to buy your barbecue at Home Depot. <laughs> I'm sorry. I have to say that. Ooh, this is a crazy photo. Or painting created in 1996 by Ukrainian artist Swev Lana Teletz. The Rain Woman is a fairly straightforward piece. It depicts, as the title suggests, a woman standing in the rain. Her features are distorted and elongated. She is dressed all in black and wears a large, wide brim hat that extends to the edges of the frame. It certainly has an eerie feeling to it, but it's the alleged lingering effects of its owners that have led people to believe this painting may be cursed. According to the ghost in my machine, there are certain people who, upon seeing the Rain Woman, feel a compulsion to purchase the painting. Those who bring the painting into their home soon begin to experience a litany of things, including insomnia, nightmares, misfortune, and the feeling of constantly being watched. In rare circumstances, owners of the Rain Woman have reported seeing or hearing someone moving about their home. To let herself claim to have a strange experience with the painting. Six months before she began the painting, she told a local newspaper that she always felt that someone was constantly watching me. When she began work on the painting, she said she felt as if someone else 
were behind it, merely using her as a tool. In total, she said it only took her about five hours to complete most of the work and that it seemed like someone else was controlling my hand. The first buyer returned the painting to, to Let's, saying she could not sleep and felt like someone was in the apartment with her. The second buyer returned the painting as well, saying that the woman in the painting plagued her his dreams. Every night she appears and follows me like a shadow, he said. It was purchased in 2008 by Sergei Sak. Choco from the band Zemlane, who held onto it for years. However, his wife later got rid of the painting as she said the two began to argue more after it came into their possession. This one is like it's the same thing. It's like a simple painting. I don't I I don't like it. I don't know about you guys. I don't like it. I don't like it. <laughs> Wendy goes, this looks so creepy. Gangstar Dave says, looks like the nun. Lisa Boo goes, that was, that's crazy. Delay Lux goes, it's piss art. Don't forget to get your haunted picture hanging hardware from Hope D. <laughs> For sure. Chris Barber goes, now that is my style. Oh, okay, Chris. All right. Honey, 2800 goes, don't put that in the bathroom. Do you want a haunted potty? Because that is how you'll get it. <laughs> Tyranna goes, creepy. Elaine goes, it reminds me of the picture in my dentist. <laughs> Leonardo goes, pencil neck. Bernadette goes, I don't know if it's just me, but I see different faces in the painting. I mean, there's kind of like, I mean, there's something kind of here and then you can kind of, yeah, it's a possibility. Elaine goes, it looks like her head is detached. It kind of does. I mean, super, well, yeah, because of, uh, um, because of this right here. That, 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 yeah. But, I don't, I mean, I, the face is cool. I just don't like the paint. <laughs> Diane goes, ghostly silhouettes. Wendy goes, head is definitely detached. Oh, you know what? Now the more that I look at it, it does look. But I think it's just because it, the, the artist put white in an area where, to, and it kind of gives that. Illusion that the head is detached while she's standing in the rain. <laughs> All right. Death and the Child, a chilling creation by a tortured artist. Edward Munch is perhaps best known for his famous piece. Famous piece, The Scream, but it is another one of his works that many people believe to be haunted. The piece, Death and the Child, depicts the tragic moment in which a young girl discovers her mother dead in a bed. Some have claimed that the eyes of the child follow them as they move about the room. This, however, can be attributed to a fairly common painting technique. In truth, much of the reason why many consider this painting to be haunted is due to the tragic cir circumstances of its painter. As Kung, Kung Thao Bruman wrote for Google Arts and Culture, Edward Munch had to grapple with death from a very young age. His mother passed away when he was just six years old and his sister died a few years later. When his father died in 1889, Munch fell into a deep personal crisis. Near the end of his life, he wrote of his childhood, My home was the home of illness and death. I've never gotten over the calamity there. It has also influenced my art. The themes of death and grief are persuasive throughout Munch's work, but death and the child is widely regarded to be one of the most searing portrayals of grief. The painting focuses solely on the young girl's pain, and perhaps for some viewers, it is simply too much to handle. It is. It's a simple, sad painting. 
that is a sad painting. Brandon Torres goes, I'll take all the spooky unwanted paintings. <laughs> D Nice goes, it reminds me of something, but I can't put my finger on it. The Lalex goes, Goodwill looks like a good place to put it. It's weird. <laughs> Jennifer Marie thinks all the paintings are beautiful. They, I mean, they do have their sense of this one. I think I would, I would have this one. This one's kind of, it has a sad story to it though. It does. Man proposes, God disposes the painting inspired by the lost Franklin expedition. Whoa. I like this painting. Don't ask me why, but I like this painting. Just two decades after Sir John, Sir John Franklin's expedition was lost on its way to the Northwest Passage, artist Edwin Lanseer unveiled his painting, Man Proposes, God Disposes, which depict, depicts the aftermath of the lost Franklin expedition as two polar bears tear into the crew's remains. Today, the painting is on display at Royal Holloway University of London, where there is a tradition of covering the painting during exams. According to the BBC, many students believe that looking at the painting during exams will cause them to fail or possibly even drive them mad. The superstition practice... Hey, there's a show going on here? Yeah. The superstitious practice, as I was saying, came about due to an urban legend that claimed... That in the 1970s, a student who viewed the painting felt compelled to die by S during her exam. Supposedly, after starting in, staring into the polar bear's eyes, the student fell into a trance-like state of madness and etched onto her paper, the polar bears made me do it. This, of course, never happened, but the urban legend spread and eventually led to the ritual of covering the painting during exams. Given that the painting itself depicts a horribly gruesome historical tragedy and that it was completed with Sir Franklin's wife was still alive, the piece is perfectly suited to paranormal speculation. So what do you think of this photo? Is that a haunted photo? Well, they, they claim it's, it's at the university, one of the, I think university, one of the universities in London. And what they do uh, is they cover it during exams because they say you will fail your exam. So now, whenever students take exam, they cover it. Have they tried, like, someone who knows the topic very well, and then maybe, like, leave it, leave it, leave, like, do they turn stupid, or what, what's going on? And then, and then, I guess, it affected someone, and they, she wrote on her exam that the polar bears made her do it. It affected someone. Yeah, it affected someone. I mean, it's a beautiful painting. It's a cool painting. Now, uh, has this been going around for a long time about paintings that are haunted? I never really. Yeah, I'm, I'm one of the paintings that they actually have on this. I heard, I've heard about. Right. What about the one from Ghostbusters? Carl was telling me about it. It's Spiegel or some weird thing. Oh, that cool thing. Yeah. Matthew's a Ghostbuster fan. He should, he should know because Matthew always brings up Ghostbusters, so he knows about the Ghostbusters. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, you have a nice little crowd here. I had to go and rant. So what happened? Well, I, I feel like you should be, your YouTube should notify more people about your channel. I know, because Giggles came on earlier and said I didn't get notified. I mean, YouTube, I'm sorry that Lisa is not uh, the average middle-aged white dude <laughs> that seems to be the only people that prosper that you guys share this videos of, but uh, come on. You know, I think she represents a good, uh, she could relate to a lot of people here. I mean, right? You guys yeah. can relate to it. You know what I mean? It seems like they oppress certain people. And I'm just like, I don't like that. I don't really like that. They do. You know, it's okay to have variety, man. You know? Got a weird girl right here. Give her some views. What do you guys think? Now, no, no in the house. Thank you for the super sticker. Hearts for Leonore, guys. Thank you, Leonore. 
There you go. So any other uh, topic? I mean, there's one more painting. Let's do that one. That I haven't described yet. And this one, oh, I know this one. Pogo the Clown, a self-portrait by serial killer John Wayne Gacy. And I'm pretty sure I'm, um, a lot of you guys may be familiar with this painting. If you, if you watch... Um, Damn. i never seen these. True crime documentaries. i never seen these. Um, about serial killers, because I do. Um, if any paintings were to be haunted by a malevolent spirit, one created by a serial killer would fit the bill. John Wayne Gacy was one of the worst serial killers in American history, known as the Killer Clown, due to the fact that he performed as Pogo the Clown during the day. At night, however, he prowled the streets of Chicago and murdered young men. John Wayne Gacy's first kill, which had allegedly been a mistake, gave him a mind-numbing bow... That he described as the ultimate thrill. It began a six year long killing spree that left 33 young men dead. And the, all the while, Gacy was presenting himself as an upstanding member of society, performing at parties and hospitals of Pogo the Clown. Gacy also created a series of paintings ranging from images of Walt Disney's Seven Dwarves and portraits of Elvis to landscape and illustrate. And illustrations of Jesus Christ, but none are as eerily terrifying as Gacy's self-portrait, Pogo the Clown, which depicts him in his daytime clown costume. The paranormally inclined, of course, believe that the spirit of particularly evil individuals can attach themselves to their belongings. In that case, the Pogo the Clown painting certainly seems to fit the bill for a potentially haunted object. In 2001, musician Nicky Stone purchased Pogo the Clown for 3000 not long after the sale, however, Stone said his dog died and his mother was diagnosed with cancer, events he believed may have been connected to Gacy's chilling painting. Hoping to rid himself of the supposedly cursed object, Stone lent the paintings to a friend to store it. That friend's neighbor would be killed in a car crash soon after, and a second friend who offered to keep the painting attempted S. I just want to get rid of it, Stone said the po of Pogo the Clown in 2005. According to a report from Newsweek, the infamous self-portrait now belongs to Ghost Adventure star, of course, and paranormal investigator Zach Bagans, who owns and operates his own haunted museum. Alongside Gacy's painting, Bagan Bagans owns a number of other items that once belonged to serial killers, including Jeffrey Dahmer's glasses, Charles Manson's hospital gown, and his bones, along with John Wayne Gacy's brain. All right. Well, anyways... What do you guys think of this photo? I, you know, if if that dude wasn't such a piece of you know what, I would love that drawing in the back. It's kind of cool. It is a cool drawing. Yeah, I'm but not gonna get it because look, it, he did it. It you know I mean? depict, but people, they say it's haunted though. Like well, it's cursed. Well, I, I feel like that's more it? cursed. Or, yeah, he drew. It's like a self portrait of himself. That's pretty. Well done. I've seen this photo before. That's Bernadette, pretty, pretty well Bernadette goes, yep, it is in his museum. It was creepy. Tyranna goes, I agree with Lewis. Chris Barber goes, the dude was effed up for sure. Diane goes, that's a creepy clown. Gangstar Dave, the next movie on Netflix's monster series. I do watch that, so I'm probably going to like look out, check that one out. Julissa has never seen the clown painting. Lenore goes, I don't like clowns, and he made it worse. Yeah, John Wayne Gacy. Jennifer wants me to show you the painting of the lady. Yeah, okay, go. Hold on, let me see if I can find her. Was she up? Let me see if I could go back. Yeah, I could go back. I don't know what page she was on. I think she was the one per... Before this. You just go back on the, on the. Could you go back on the browser? Whoa! <laughs> this one. This is the one that Jennifer Murray wanted Dude, me to show you. That is weird. I don't like. I don't like this photo. But it's weird. It looks like a lamb or something. Tyranna, thank you for your super sticker. <laughs> Hearts for Tyranna, guys! <laughs> but yeah, 
I don't. They say it. And she looks. Um, she looks decapitated, but I don't. They're saying it's it's haunted too. Like the people that own it have. I respect all of it. Like I, I look. I don't like. I I say this. It's even when I cover the UFO stuff. Like I don't know. I don't know these paintings, but I, I do encourage. Even if you're a non-believer or a skeptic, I think you should respect all this stuff because you don't know. If people are saying it's haunted. Like, what, what can I? You know, that's their experience. Yeah. Who am I to say no? It's not. You know what I mean? I mean, I mean, the only way to find out is to purchase the <laughs> the painting. How much is it, though? Oh, uh, I don't know. She, I don't think, I don't. It didn't say where. It didn't say where it is now. Actually, it just said the a band member from a, a band bought it. But then became, but had issues after, um, a band. Yeah, like a band. Somebody in a band. It's a Ukrainian artist. So some probably someone over there that I've never heard of. <laughs> but that was in two thousand eight. So I don't know who else has it now. Probably they locked it up somewhere, or maybe the artist took it you back. Know, you could always research it, and then on Monday let them know. I could. Yeah. I like that. I like that lady though. She was cool. <laughs> Julissa goes. Did Lewis? Did Lewis say lamb? <laughs> she looks like a lamb. <laughs> she, <laughs> no, I see. Yeah. If you're not like really looking at it, it does. <laughs> she looks like a lamb or Pippi Longstocking. <laughs> like an old picture of Pippi Longstocking. Yeah, because the. <laughs> Wendy, go silence of the lambs. I'm having nightmares. Thank you, Lee. <laughs> D-Nice, thank you for the super sticker. Hearts thank for you, D-Nice. Hearts for D-Nice, guys. Thank you, D-Nice. Gangstar Dave goes, horns on her head. Yeah, it kind of looks like that. <laughs> or ears, like long ears. <laughs> so. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so uh, Lisa wants to keep going. Unfortunately, like we have an uh, arrangement to do uh, some something to do. Um, but uh, last minute questions, folks, as we wrap up, is that okay? Yeah, that's fine. I'm just glad I was able to stream and hang out with you guys. Yeah, because you really, you really want to, uh, you really want to stream. The video quality is really good. Like out there, so you don't look bad. Uh, I don't. I now. feel. <laughs> I Tinkle feel like Tits McGee, happy weekend, yo! Yay, Tinkle Tits! Hearts for Tinkle Tits for being a member for three months. We're gonna be. Uh, I think I'm gonna ask Lisa about this as well. Uh, we're, we're a team. Uh, obviously, we're gonna be um, tightening up our. Uh, how would I say? Production or our uh, videos and stuff like that. Uh, moving into the middle of the month and everything so stick with us um remember there's not there's not much as far as like getting notified is concerned but we're going to bring in some very good um uh, content for you so we're going to be tying that up um i think we're going to be more consistent i actually wanted to do like a town hall with the communities and uh ask you all advice uh what what's more convenient as far as time schedule is concerned. Uh, so we could have a supernatural creepy stuff here on Grayson Report. And, and unknown. And, and the unknown. Unexplained. And then over there on Nerd Report, uh, we could do uh, UFOs and weird stuff over there. And then have Nerd Report Daily is just, you know, like car chases, true crime. Hangout. Hangouts and stuff like that. We don't have to worry about the algorithm. And Nuke the Fridge, we're going to be doing... Um, some movie content there. Team up with uh, Popcorn Planet. It's, uh, uh, what is it called? Uh, movie Movie Worlds Plus. So, and then next week I'm talking to Eli Roth. Oh yeah, Eli Roth has a horror show, right? Like a, a supernatural show. Um, he uh, he's got on um, he's got on Discovery Plus or Max. He has um, I watch him. He has the ghost ruin my life show he has a bunch of shows actually yeah. and then he also has the haunted museum where he collaborates with zach uh bagans which is is airing now it airs on tuesday or thursday i haven't seen the past 
Thursday episode. So he collaborates with him on that. So, um, and Thanksgiving is coming out next Friday. So if you guys are looking. Oh, the movie? The movie. Yeah, I can't talk about it. If you guys are hankering to watch a horror film, check out Thanksgiving. And if you like Eli Roth, I'm sure going to try to check it out. I'm looking forward to it. Um, well, uh, that being said, uh, if you all could go to my, our Telegram, is that cool? You guys want to share? And I have some uh, a statement to uh, give out on my Telegram uh, and stuff. Some some and stuff. Guys, I'm there. I just lurk because with my job, sometimes I can't <laughs> be there all the time. Mm -hmm. But I do. I do read your comments. I am there. So even I'm hearting I'm hearting the comments as I go. So I do read your comments, even though I'm not saying I'm not too active because I do my nine to five has been keeping me busy. But I am. I'm there. I'm, I'm just being a ghost. <laughs> if Brandon can share our telegrams, I'm going to go to the telegram uh, and stuff. Uh, I have a, I have, I have an announcement or something. I have to, I have to set the record straight on my telegram, Lisa. I'm sorry. I got to tell everybody this is kind of embarrassing, but, but, uh, you know, got to spank someone before it gets out of hand. You know me, I go straight to the point, baby. <laughs> True. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing to hide here. <laughs> All right. So if you love drama, head over to my Telegram right now. I like it. I have a Telegram too, but but more more of the the party happens in Nerd Report. <laughs> <laughs> no, go to both. Go to but both. go to both, guys. Yeah. Who's over there on our Telegram? All right. Bernadette shared it and stuff. All right, Lisa, you, uh, you want to close up? All right, guys. Um, Pretty much my next stream, I'll be on uh, Monday at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. So be there, be squared. I'll be talking all things spooky. I do not have a topic yet. So I will be posting on uh, Telegram. I do have a Discord as well. Um, Just, just because due to YouTube not notifying you guys i do post in different places so you guys do know she's on on saturday nights i'm pretty much on the same days i'm on yeah. saturdays at 8 p i can't except today i went on a little early but i'm pretty much on saturdays at 8 p.m pacific standard time and mondays at 7 p.m pacific standard time for right now i hope in the future that i can add an extra day but we'll we'll see how that goes because my nine to five does keep me busy but um we'll see how that goes guys but Thank you for joining me and stay spooky and I'll see you on the next one. Good night, guys. Oh, yeah. And vote. My beer should stay or my beer should go. Go to the telegram. All right. Bye, guys.